Hello everyone, this is Cedric from Kerbos.io and this recording will show you how to deploy a Kerbos agent in just a few minutes into Balena Cloud. So let's get started. So you might have hundreds or thousands of IoT devices that you want to manage at scale, then probably you have to look into Balena.io. Balena.io is a platform that allows you to scale your IoT devices or your devices, for example, Kerbos.io agents at scale and then also monitor them and administer them remotely with over-the-air updates and so on. So as you may know, Kerbos.io is a video surveillance system. And what we actually did in the last few years is we had a close collaboration with the Balena.io team. And we basically created some webinars, some videos, but also this uh, super cool blog, which sadly is outdated. So request to Balena, let's create a new blog. But it was kind of illustrating with the, the concept that we had then in place with Belena.io is that how can you deploy a Kerberos agent, Kerberos.io, using Belena into, a, for example, a Raspberry Pi. So you will still see the old UI and we would like to create this new video using some new concepts because both Belena.io and Kerberos.io drastically changed over time. So uh, let's get started with Belena.io. Um, so what is new? Over the years, they've brought in new concepts. So we know they have Belena Etcher, but now they also have Belena Hub. What is Belena Hub? Belena Hub is actually the IoT marketplace um, for your applications. So it means that if you have an application that you want to deploy to your fleet of devices, so you hear fleet is an important concept, then you actually can select an application or build your application yourself. And guess what? We have actually built our own application which is called Video Surveillance. So under the hood, what we are doing is we're providing Kerberos Agent, we package it as Video Surveillance, but the idea is that we will compose it with different solutions over time. So we still have the concept of blocks. So you have a Bolena block, so we create our own agent block, and you can actually include in your existing application an application that you wish to build. So uh, let's get, let's start it. Um, so what do we want to deploy? We want to deploy this beautiful thing, this is a Kerberos agent, because we have a camera at home, in our company, wherever, and we actually want to connect it, or we want to uh, deploy or have a workload Kerberos agent that can actually interfere or interact with that camera stream. So how does the new agent looks like? So you can play with the demo, it looks like this. So you have a new dashboard where you can see a live view, but also the latest recordings. You can go to a settings page and we've included far more options than we had before. Uh, for example, now you can do like continuous recordings. Let me just put it to English. So you have um, continuous recording and you can have motion-based recording. You can set up multiple regions of interests. We have now WebRTC for um, full resolution live streaming. We also have OnVIF capabilities, a lot of new features. I will not go into that, uh, but important to know is that once you have it set up, you can also publish your uh, recordings into our Kerberos Hub, which we'll discover in, in another um, video. So the purpose of today is we would like to see this Kerberos agent on uh, this Raspberry Pi. So uh, this is uh, a Raspberry Pi tree. It looks like this. It's uh, very hard to find nowadays. But what we will do is we'll deploy a Kerberos agent on this device. And how we will do that? We'll use Belena.io. So uh, to start, what you actually need is uh, you can log in into the into application. This is Belena Cloud. In here, you will find all your fleets. So you can create one or more fleets. What I've currently did is I have a fleet for Raspberry Pi Zero uh, or Raspberry Pi 2s. So what a fleet actually is, is um, it's a, a concept, it's some kind of template that you defined for a specific set of devices. So imagine you're building your own board using a specific architecture. What you can actually do is you can uh, create a fleet for that specific architecture and then every device that you will add to your fleet will inherit from the template and will inherit or install the application that you have defined. So there are plenty of ways to do that. So what we can actually do is through the Balena Hub, for example, you can select the application that you wish and you can press the deploy button. So before we do that, what you actually notice is that the supported devices is huge. So previously we just had a limited number of architectures 
actually now we support almost every board. So under the hood, what we are actually doing is we are providing different architectures for the Corvus agent. We are cross-building the Docker image. And that explains why we are now capable of, of providing a lot more different uh, boards or you can use a lot of different boards. So um, how can we install this application? Uh, we can just press the deploy button. So when you press the deploy button, what actually will happen is you will be guided to the fleet page and in here you can provide a name for your fleet. So as we will deploy the Kerberos agent to a fleet of Raspberry Pi 3 devices, I might uh, call it Kerberos IO agent for Raspberry Pi 3. So from the drop down, you can select the specific device that you wish. So there's a huge list of potential devices, but for today we'll use the Raspberry Pi 3. So I can create and deploy, and what it basically will do, it will just create some kind of fleet with metadata and uh, the base image that we would like to, to use. So what it will do is, depending on the architecture of so ARM v7, it will look into my application, into the image, and it will look for the, for the right base image and the, the right architecture, and it will create a build inside Bolena. So the next step I can do is I need to add a device. So let's start with one, but eventually you can hundred, add hundreds or thousands of these devices. And you select by providing uh, specific settings, like uh, the type of version for the Bolena OS, so the, the operating system that will be installed, uh, the type of environment that you wish to install it to, and then the way of connecting. So either you have Ethernet or you have Wi-Fi. So let's use Wi-Fi for the moment. So I just provide my credentials and I uh, press download. So from here I can actually flash, but I wish to download the file. So uh, let me do that. So downloading pretty quickly. Yes, there it is. So now the question comes like, how can we flash this? Well, uh, the cool thing is that Balena also has, a, has another product, which is called uh, Balena Etcher. And it looks like this. And you might have seen this, it's been there for years and they've added and improved it over time, cross-platform, cross so you can use it on Windows, Linux, or uh, OS X. Um, and they've previously, this was like the old school way, what we will do now is you can just select the file, but nowadays you can also do a remote download of the image and then directly flash it. So no need to download it to your operating system, however, we will do that. So what I did is I downloaded the file and hopefully I'll see my SD card. So I have an SD card plugged in into my laptop and I can select it from here. So last step is uh, to click the flash button and then magically it should show, uh, should show up. So because we need to do some administration stuff, um, I have to provide a password. Oop. So now it will start flashing the image to the SD card. So it will not flash the underlying application already, but it will start flashing the operating system together with the credentials, Wi-Fi credentials that I've provided. So depending on the board, it will use a different image and it will use the required uh, drivers, for example, wireless driver to set up a wireless connection. So the first thing it will do when you would, when this is done, you turn on the, your, your you take the SD card, you plug it into the Raspberry Pi, you power it on, what it basically does, it will do some formatting of the SD card, I believe, expansion as well, and it will call home. And once it has a valid connection, internet connection, what it will do is it will pull the image so that we've defined. So in the application, you can have one or more blocks, it will start downloading and bootstrapping them on the device. And this is something I can remotely follow through the Palena console, and I will show you later on. So it looks like uh, it's done. So what I can now do is I just take the SD card up and I can, I think I can just plug it in the other way around. Voila. So let's uh, provide a power supply and let's see what it will do. Yes, it's turning on, so I can close this. And this might take a few minutes, so just hold on for a few, uh, for a few minutes while uh, the device is initialized and it's showing up in here.
And there it is, it just showed up online. So it means that my credentials were correct. And what I can do now is I can just go into the device. What I will notice is that I get a, a, an error like warning devices undervolted, might be the case. But directly what I will see is that the device is not yet available. So it's online, but it's pulling the images. So this is what I mean is initially you flash the operating system, then afterwards it calls home. So it connects to Balena Cloud and will start download it, downloading the, the different images or blocks from my application video surveillance. So I have two blocks, host name, which is already in place. It's basically provides a local DNS name that you can just enter into your browser when you're in your local network. And then the most important thing is the agent. It's the whole container, the UI uh, that actually does the connection with the camera. And then um, you provide you a nice user interface. So while that's uh, downloading, we'll notice directly some, some cool features is that in your fleet, you will have a uh, device page. And for each device, you will be able to follow up the CPU, uh, the temperature, the memory, and the storage. So the idea with this video surveillance application is that you will make or store recordings. So ideally, and hopefully, you will see those storage um, metric uh, growing over time. On the left, what you will see is that the, the status, so it's still updating, it gets a unique ID, um, specific version of Balena OS, and then most importantly, you will find some local networking information. So basically what you can do if this is running, you will find out, okay, where is it, in which network is it, which subnet, and what is the specific IP address, but also what is the public IP address, the, the MAC addresses and so on. So it might be useful just to discover that because Basically, you will not know if you use DHCP, DHCP uh, what is the IP address of uh, this specific device. You can make it static afterwards. On the right side, you will see logging. So once this is uh, up and running, you will see some logging of the Kerbal's agent. So you will see remotely what the Raspberry Pi and what the agent is kind of doing. For example, if it's making recordings, if it's properly connected and these kind of things. So very nice thing, you don't have to be in the local network through Valena Cloud, you can actually follow, it up, follow that up easily. And then the last thing is um, you can select a target. Uh, you can open a terminal. So um, what I just see is that the agent is, is currently running. So let me try it. So what I can do is I can try to make a remote session SSH connection into my container. So my uh, from remote, I can just SSH into the agent container. And even I can SSH into the board. So that's pretty cool. So if I just type in some shell comments, I will find out that I can just, I'm just remotely accessing my agents, which, which is pretty cool. Uh, if you want to do some remote debugging or um, I don't know, uh, change some configuration, then you can actually do it. So now um, with the new agent, um, we've drastically simplified how it works. So we have a single binary and that actually runs everything. It runs the, the application itself, but it also, um, yeah, it, it also runs the, the UI. So uh, let me just create something, a public device URL. What this actually is, is instead of having a public IP address, you can expose the HTTP ports True, um, a true public load balancer. So if I would open this, I should see the Kerberos agent loading in. So this will load, connect remotely. Well, this is the new UI. So basically I can sign in with root root and I should see the, the UI popping up. So this is the dashboard. Um, what you will see in the in the logs here is that there's no stream connected. So probably what we want to do is we want to provide a, a stream. So I can go to the configure tab, camera section, section, camera section, and I can provide, for example, a fake RTSP connection. So let me do that. Verify the connection working. I just save. So once I go to the dashboard, I will see that the IP camera is connected and a live view is showing up. So what I can do from here is I can actually do a lot more things. So I can say like, I want to have continuous recording. So 24 and seven and part of 30 seconds. And um, 
I actually want to store my recordings on Kerberos Hub. That's something I can definitely do. So when I press save, then actually what I will see is that the camera or the agent will reconnect to the camera and it will start making recordings. So these recordings I can then view afterwards. So I think, yeah, maybe one more thing. Um, so previously with the previous agent, you had to uh, set up or go to the configurations individually or provide a configuration file. That's actually no longer needed um, because we can configure everything using environment variables. So every setting that you've seen on this, on this page, you can actually replicate through an environment variable and that drastically simplifies the deployment. And the reason why is because from Belena point of view, what you can actually do is you can add environment variables through the UI. So instead of like providing or going to the, uh, to the interface of, of Kerbal's agent, you can specify the environment, environment variables that you find here directly into Belena and it will be propagated to the device. And what's even better is that on the fleet level, you can do the same. So on the higher level for all your devices, you can, for example, provide your Kerberos Hub settings or uh, specific MQTT settings. And or from this point of, from this level, you can then propagate a setting below to every single device. So I think this is uh, what I wanted to show you. So uh, just to recap, we showcased how easy it is to deploy Kerberos Agent using Belena apps into Belena clouds. How can you remotely configure your Kerberos Agent using a public DNS name and how you can follow up using a terminal and configure uh, your configuration through environment variables. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please let me know how it goes with Belena Cloud, Kerberos Agent. We'll like your feedback and see you soon. Bye-bye.